Hi everybody, Paul from Wicked Sounds Entertainments, back with you yet again. Well, I've been promising for a little while now to do, uh, do a video all about my uh, projection system. And uh, it's a new toy that I... Why, why do I call it a toy? It's not a toy. Um, it's a bit more expensive than a toy. Um, it's a new addition to uh, my full stage set, uh, which uh, unfortunately I don't get much chance to uh, use very often because it is quite a large set, so it's reserved specifically for uh, people like corporate customers and high-end priced uh, gigs as well because it's, uh, it, it's quite a large set to, uh, to use and I need a lot of space, so it has to be a large uh, venue to be able to set it up properly. However, uh, it is... Uh, sizable insofar as that uh, instead of using a projector I could go to uh, hanging LCD screens that uh, we used to use a, a single LCD screen anyway uh, but now obviously larger size screens have dramatically dropped in price they become more feasible to use for a smaller gig if I wanted to uh, at the moment that's not uh, the route that I'm taking though I want to keep this uh, exclusively for the larger larger gigs now it's still in its uh, early days I'm not I haven't exploited it to its full uh, degree as yet and uh, I'm going to show you in this video and depending on how things go in this video it might actually spread to two but we'll see I'm going to show you in this video uh, how I utilize the video uh, projection system uh, for visualizations um, somebody I forget your name I'm very very sorry I should have checked before I started this video but asked me about my uh, in my Park Chano video uh, that I did uh, in the south of France uh, what the moving uh, uh, images were on the on the wall that were being shown and what light was it that was being used and I did say that it was actually not a light it is a video projector and I used the video projector to project uh, visualizations onto onto a screen. The screen wasn't an option unfortunately in France uh, so we projected it onto a wall and it worked okay. Um, but obviously projecting images uh, is best onto a, a, a dedicated screen. Uh, reason being is that a screen is finished to give you the optimum uh, reflected light back to your audience. Um, it's obviously white um, or a silver uh, colour depending on the type of screen that you get uh, and the coating that's on the screen is, is designed to actually reflect the light back uh, rather than absorb the light which obviously if you're projecting onto something like a, a painted wall that actually will uh, ab absorb some of the light and not reflect it back into you into the eyes of the of the viewers uh, so you don't get the, uh, the true colours you don't get uh, a true image if you like it looks a bit washed out um, and a bit dull or a bit off color so uh, that's why people specialize in, in screens that's why screens are, are expensive some screens are uh, have a coating of like miniature glass beads and things like that I don't know the technologies behind them but I do know uh, why they are expensive it's, uh, it's a simple matter that um, they're very very specialized uh, we've seen recently um, people like uh, DJScreen.com uh, producing the uh, the latex stretchable uh, screens, which are uh, front and rear projection. Uh, absolutely great idea. Uh, but as you will see from this video, hopefully, that they still produce a fairly washed out effect, purely and simply because of the material that you use. Uh, you can't have the best of both worlds, if you like. You can't have a, a screen that will crunch up into a bag that will fit in a, a small rucksack uh, producing the same as a proper dedicated screen. Now I was lucky to uh, get the type of screen that I did fairly reasonably on eBay. Um, I wish I'd bought the, the the other one that they had on offer as well. It's around about five foot, five and a half foot wide. Um, it's a uh, a wide screen format. Um, it's it shrinks down. It rolls down. It's got at the back of the screen. There is there are hydraulic arms. Uh, to keep the, t the screen taut, it's got drop down legs on it and it. But once it's all closed down uh, the casing that it's in, I'm just having a look across now the casing that it's in is about three inches by about four and a half inches um, and obviously five foot long as well for the screen so it's uh, it's very very compact, it's a, it's a really tough aluminium case and the actual screen itself was, um, has won design awards um, I think the screen that I've got sells for almost about 400 pounds 
I got it for a little touch over a hundred quid. Uh, so I got an absolute bargain. It's in mint condition and it's a beautiful screen. Um, it's a made by a company called Projector, which is P R O J E C T A. Uh, I can't remember the model number, uh, but if you go to their website, um, have a look. You'll see the type of screens that they they do. Really, really good. Like I say, very expensive um, to buy new, uh, but I was lucky. I picked up a bargain off of eBay. Uh, right then, on to uh, the technical side of things. Um, what is it that I run? Well, it's it's Winamp. <laughs> There's nothing special about it. It's Winamp. Uh, Winamp's got some fantastic um, visualization AVS files. Uh, around about two and a half thousand of them, uh, I think, at the last count on the uh, Winamp website. Now, the good thing about Winamp is that uh, it's highly flexible and people have written loads and loads of plugins to do different things. Uh, now, as you all probably know, that Winamp, uh, I don't think, is, is a recorder. I've, do, I've never used it as a recorder. Can it record? I don't know. Possibly, I don't know. Um, but it's there for playing music. It has its built-in visualisation program. Um, so how do I utilise it? If uh, I play music through a separate system, um, but Winamp works and responds to the music that I play through a separate system. Well, there's a little plugin called uh, a line-in plugin. Uh, Winamp itself already has one, but it uh, built in, but it's it doesn't do what I want it to do. So I, I used a third-party plugin, which is available again off the uh, Winamp website. Um, just a little line in plugin and what that does it reads the input uh, from your oh, sound card or in my case the sound card that's built into the laptop it reads the audio that's fed in to the input and it responds to that rather than responding to music that uh, you actually play through Winamp so therefore quite simply what I do is I take a feed from my mixer uh, through either the booth output or a tape output off my mixer and feed it into the input of my laptop set the line in on Winamp to read the line in feed that I've put in and that then reproduces the visualizations in response to my music simple as that um, there's no rocket science about it um, it didn't take particularly long to find all this out uh, but I'm here now telling you so that you don't have to go and do the hard work that I did um, Anybody who's wanting this, the, the particulars, drop me an email and I will get you the actual file name that you need to look for and, and I'll give you all the details that you need to know anyway. When it comes to the visualizations, there's, like I say, about two and a half thousand visualization files available on Winamp for download, but uh, you don't particularly want to uh, download every single one of them and use them all because some of them are pretty awful, um, some of them are good. What to do is go and have a play about with them. You'll find that certain groups of uh, uh, AVS file authors produce some really, really good stuff. And they're the ones that you want to go for. Now, an AVS file is basically a small text file with a descriptor in there that tells uh, Winamp how to draw pictures and uh, how to respond to music and how long to do this and what to do that and what colour, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't know the ins and outs of how they work, but they're really easy to... Uh, weed out because it basically creates a folder with all the winner uh, with all the AVS files in it and then all you need to do is pick out the ones that you like just by going through and um, playing them through Winamp and saying yeah that looks good that doesn't that does that does I did that in my living room with the screen set up just projecting it through the projector and said does that look good on the big screen yes well I'll keep that one uh, that one doesn't I'll delete that one and I created a folder uh, I don't know there's probably around about 600 different uh, visualization files in there now. I've set Winamp up to rotate through them so they change every 20 seconds or 30 seconds and I can change that or you know, get it to, to do it so it, I have to change it manually, I can get it to change every second or every two seconds. I find that uh, changing every, every 20 seconds gives you three per minute through a night is going to give you hundreds and hundreds of different variations. Um, you don't want to leave them on too short, otherwise people just don't get the effect. You don't want to leave them on too long, people get bored. Right then, let's get to the hardware and I'll show you how it's all set up. 